Hello guys, and I'm here from Not Toys Action Figures bringing you another Power Rangers Lightning Collection review. And this time we're going all the way back, all, all, all the way back to wave one with the Dino Rangers Lightning Collection, Dino Charge Red Ranger. And yes, to be honest, this is a <laughs> this is a team I never thought that I would collect. Um because because it's so old and like these figures are you know, the older they are, the really hard, the harder they become to get. Um but I have recently been really, really feeling like nostalgic for this artwork and kind of have been wanting to collect as much, many figures with this old box style as possible. Um, mostly because I don't, I, I just love the artwork. It looks great. Also because, yeah, I know over the next year or so, um, we might not be getting any more lightning collection figures. So, uh, yeah, I need to kind of get some, some backlog that I can, uh, open over the next year or so. So I actually picked up the full Dino Tards team. I have red, I have gold, I have black, I have green, I have pink. I need to buy blue. Blue is a new one. I uh, got them off eBay. They're in pretty good condition. You can see if you look at on this, uh, like the reflection there, you can see some scratches on the on the screen. It just kind of looks old. I think that's just from being placed in and out of a uh, a shelf. Um, but yeah, I got a good deal on on the whole team up until now. They're rare figures. I've n I've never opened up Dino Charge before. I don't really know much about the series. Um, so yeah, let's get this guy out of the box and see what he can do. And here is a Dino Charge Red Ranger out of the box in the patent pending, no toys action figures, or not toys action figures, back of the box pose. And yeah, it's, it's really interesting looking at these older figures. I mean, recently I've been doing a lot of remastered stuff, like, you know, the, the newest stuff that we have. And it's kind of cool to see where the, the, um, the Lightning Collection went. Because I feel like this one, you know, it was wave one, I believe. And you can tell, like, they went out, they wanted to kind of, like, impress people. Like, you can see, like, the, the paint applications look great. Um, what I'm, I'm really impressed with is on the hands, the back of the hands are painted, which we don't, we, we didn't get that often in the uh, Lightning Collection going forward. Like, when you think of Dino Thunder, the back of the hands weren't painted. Um, there's, like, nice paint applications there on the shoulder pad, the hand, the sword. Um... Yeah, it's kind of like funny even there going down if we look at his feet. Oops. If we look at his feet, even the bottom, the soles of the shoes are painted. And it's sort of like, why Hasbro? Why couldn't you do that with the Mighty Morphin figures? Especially with the remastered one, they're still missing the black soles. So it's kind of cool like you, for them to show you, like, this is what we can do with a lot of this stuff. Like, the helmet looks good. The arms, I'm looking at the Dino Charge Ranger. I was wondering if this is like discoloration or if it's on purpose. It does look like his arms are slightly darker, but not this kind of brown. Um, so maybe, yeah, this was maybe they just didn't have the correct plastic or because this figure's getting quite old, it uh, has discolored. Um, but no, it's cool to look at. It's cool to, to kind of see where we, where we came from and kind of compare it to where we are now. Let's put him in another pose. Okay, and here is the Dino Charge Ranger up on the stand, doing a spin, kind of doing like a high block, ready to count with a punch. And yeah, I just wanted to put him on the stand just so you could see the back because the back is really nicely painted, painted as well. Obviously looks a bit weird because I have him leaning far, forward so far, but um, it's a very interesting character design and figure. And like, I'm really looking forward. I think the next one I'll open up is pink because pink is like, uh, only about probably a year old or maybe even less. I think it was like worth 13 um, And I'm really interested to see what they changed or what they improved um, Or what didn't improve what kind of stayed the same or maybe even got worse uh, Because they are such an interesting character design and they you know the paint apps have done really nicely You can see here as it spins around like how nicely the black lines up Again, I think this maybe this they chose this character to do in way of one to be like, yeah, look what we can do. Like, look how good these figures are gonna look. And maybe going forward, they they didn't manage to keep that quality there. Um, but yeah, he looks great as he spins around to get a zoom out. Uh, yeah, as he does the high block there, it would be cool if I had someone over uh, someone else to have him fighting up against. But I just tidied away all of my remastered stuff, so uh, he's just got to stand there and look cool as he spins round and as he does, maybe we should go through his articulation. We probably know most of it, since, but since it's the first time uh, with this kind of uh, team, 
it would be cool to go through the articulation quickly. So let's do that now. Okay, guys. So let's go through the red dino charge ranges articulation. You will know it. You can see this is obviously the old body because it's the, one of the original figures and um, it still has the pins and everything. But the articulation was nevertheless always good. So we have a tilt to the side, tilt to the side. He has a little bit of look down. Actually, not too bad for the look down just because of the way that the, the helmet is made little bit of look up doesn't have any tilt really on the side if we go to the shoulders the shoulders come up to where you would expect them to come um you can hear it click there it goes to about 90 i don't know if this one is as tight it's one thing with the lightning collection they do have really tight shoulders i don't want to uh to force it too much the shoulder does spin around even though it has this shoulder pad here the shoulder pad is um just put more a bit, bit more light on him the shoulder pad is fixed it's not like a, a rubber one that gets out of the way as you move it up you have to move the arm out so that his arm can only kind of go to the side there uh like always we have a bicep swivel we have a nice uh butterfly and his is quite loose which is nice so it gets some good range of motion going backwards and forwards so if you want to get him into some right like, really posable with his arms around his arms back maybe holding the, the the sword coming down like that you can do gun in this hand it'll look great yeah nice butterfly joint you already saw that it, he has a nice ball at the waist which is uh yeah this guy he's nice and warmed up so he's moving a lot really nice that they, they decided to paint all of the silver underneath there so even when he's really far forward or really far back it, I mean, the back doesn't look as good, but um, yeah, it doesn't break it up, at least at the front, too much, depending on what you want to do. Then he has crunch. The crunch is not the best. There is a belt here, but the belt, interestingly enough, is a separate piece. So if you want to move the belt down, you obviously get way more crunch. He goes forward quite far. He goes back quite far. So that's nice and uh, it's not something actually now that i'm thinking about we see that often in in the lightning collection is having a movable belt the belt there i'm not really sure what it's supposed to be it's not very clear i, I imagine it's probably got something to do with his morpher but um yeah it's cool that you can move it down if you need to or move it up like some people like having belts really high some people like having belts medium some people like having belts low obviously having it as a separate piece makes that a lot easier to do we have then the old um double jointed elbows which i think is cool because uh also here it's really nice like you can see like the the bicep has a slight cut out of it so it means that like, you can get the arm up to here and it kind of fits around the glove which is really awesome or you can move that even further up and get it even further if you want to get him in like a, i don't know sort of like a boxing pose he's got one hand up he's got one hand to block and you've got one hand to punch. Um, really cool. Then we go down. There's no swivel on the forearm. There's obviously swivel here. And he has a nice bit of tilt on this hand. And also this hand, the trigger hand, has a bit of tilt. But not. No, it does go quite far. Yeah. So, Which is quite nice. Again, nice to see. Because the, the remastered, they also have tilt on the hand. But you can't tilt them because the gloves come too far down. Then if we go down to the waist, the leg comes up really high. As always, goes back so far, goes out to the side quite nicely. So you can get him in some some kicking poses if you want. Uh, he has a thigh swivel, which on this one is very, very tight. So I want to just be careful there. On both, it's quite tight, but this one isn't clicking. So yeah, feel a bit more secure doing that one. He has the pinned knees, which again... You can get to go back. He can almost kick himself in the bum. You go down. Does he have the boot swivel? He does. The boots look really nice. I like just the silver inlay. There's a nice bit of sculpting there on the boots going down. Feels very Star wars -y actually. Um, and then we have the rocker. We have the foot going backwards and forwards. His foot feels very... Um, like, like you can feel like the grooves in it, which is nice. Which, again, we don't really see anymore. The, the feet are very sort of... Uh, a very sort of um what's the word it's like yeah like loose in a lot of ways which does help with posing but it can also be annoying because if they're too loose then the posing won't work the figure itself like say if we get like a bit of a close so you can see there how nice the, the 
Tyrannosaurus looks, how nice the paint app is on this going round. Under the arm it even matches. I mean, it's a little bit off there, but for Hasbro, that's great. Going up here, paint on there. On the helmet, you can see there's a green eye. He's obviously the Tyrannosaurus. Looks really nicely painted too. Um, the belt, we already showed. And uh, the figure, yeah, itself, I was a bit nervous because obviously I bought it secondhand, so I was worried what state it would be in. He's actually in really good condition. Um, I just... Yeah, just think maybe he could just do a little clean, just just you know some just water and soap just to wipe him down. Maybe bring out these colours a little bit more. Uh, he does have a little scuff there, and he has scuffs on his hands, obviously where he's been holding his weapons. But that's normal, especially for an older figure. But yeah, I'm really happy I picked him up. Let's put him in his civilian head, and then we'll uh, no, actually let's look at his civilian head. Let's look at his accessories. So we do have, I believe, this character is called Tyler. Very nice head sculpt, even for back then. Like, it, it has the kind of uh, more shiny look to it. Like I said, like now, with the remastered, the heads seem very, like, matte and very cartoony or comic booky. This one looks way more realistic. And even for, you know, back in 2020 or 2019 when this was released, this is a really awesome looking head. The eyes look great. The mouth, the, the pose looks very much like uh, the person, the actor that plays Tyler. Very cool. Then if we go into his accessories, he has his sword. Um, the sword feels quite basic. Like the sword feels almost toy-ish um, because it is so basic. It's just a, like, you know, a very cheap bit of plastic. Like it's not even like molded plastic, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, it is just a piece of like really cheap plastic. Uh, the sword itself, you know, it has this nice hilt, but it's it's really just feels like um almost like a toothpick it's so light it's so basic yeah the swords i guess they hadn't nailed it back then on in contrast you then have his gun which just feels like a big chunk of like uh molded plastic um you can see there there's a lot of there's nice detail on it but nothing's really been painted it's just bright yellow uh with black on this side he does have some paint there but not on this side um, and the gun just feels, yeah, it just feels chunky. Like this feels too, too thin and this feels too chunky. Like, and they don't, they both aren't detailed enough. But again, maybe Hasbro weren't there back in the day with the paint apps on the accessories. But then saying that seems to contradict itself. We have two really nice fists with this little plate on the back that is painted. Awesome. Um, wish we saw more of that today. And we have the infamous kind of sword effect, which we've seen used multiple times now. Um, this is probably actually my favorite effect because it just makes so much sense. You just put the sword in and it just works and looks good. Um, so yeah, that was all of his accessories. Let's now put his civilian head on and end the episode. And here he is with Tyler with his civilian head on. And yeah, just standing looking cool I actually saw this uh this pose on Hasbro's original promo shots for the for the figure um and yeah i mean it's a great pose it's a great looking figure happy to have uh, opened up this team and to get this team out of the boxes let me know in the comments below which um which one you want to see me open next like i said i still have black green pink gold and will probably be purchasing blue in the future so let me know in the comments who you would like to see next. I think personally I'd like to open up pink just to compare them. But if there is one that kind of comes out on top as like, no, you need to open this guy next. He's the best. Then I will, of course, do it. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's very interesting to go back through the history of, of Lightning Collection. Really, like I said, with this kind of second wave of the of the remastered figures being like, okay, this is what the, the figures will be going forwards. Or at least what the bodies will be going forwards. It's interesting to look back and see what, uh, yeah, like where we where we came from, what's improved, what maybe has kind of fallen by the wayside, what maybe has gotten worse, and um, yeah, and I, I really get the feeling that with this figure and also with the White Ranger, that Hasbro went out to be like try to wow people, and I think this is a great figure. You know, it's an it's an old one now; it's three or four years old, but it's a great one. It looks fantastic. So yeah, so that was my review of the Dino Charge Red Ranger. Um, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed, please make sure you leave me a like because likes help new people find the channel. And we want as many people to watch this video as we can. Uh, we want to share how cool this Dino Charge Ranger is. And if you want to see more Lightning Collection content, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of, lot of Lightning Collection content. We just went through all the remastered stuff. We have the new Rita Repulsor. We have some videos about uh, if you should buy the remastered uh, collection. 
um, remakes or not, or if you should just, just stick with the originals if you have them. And of course, we're going to have more download charts. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.